Hello, I'm Song Hun Lim. With my colleagues, I'd like to present a case treated with the mandibular rotational setback surgery. This case was shown in the June 2020 issue of the AJO DO. 21-year-old male, he had mandibular prothesis and 6.5 mm mandibular shift to the left. Mandibular incisors were tipped to the right as a transverse dental alveolar compensation to this mandibular shift. Maxillary right second premolar was congenitally missing. Therefore, maxillary dental midline was deviated to the right. Mandibular dental midline was deviated to the left. However, this was less than the half of the skeletal deviation due to the transverse compensation. Molar relationships were 3.5 and 5 mm class 3. Cephalometric analysis showed A and B angle of minus 7.2 degrees with suppressor of minus 16.5 mm. Maxillary incisors were proclined, mandibular incisors were retroclined as an anteroposterior dental alveolar compensation. Frankport mandibular plane angle was 24 degrees. Occlusal plane was only 6.9 degrees. This flat occlusal plane can be considered as a vertical dental alveolar compensation to the excessive vertical growth of the ramus. Maxillary arch was narrower on the right side and wider on the left side due to the transverse compensation to the mandibular shift to the left. Before start treatment, 3D simulation of surgery was made for the diagnostic purpose with the mandible in the ideal position like the orange color on the left figures and dark blue color on the right figure. At this diagnostic surgical occlusion, lingual crossbite was formed on the right side and large anterior overjet was formed. This simulation revealed the true extent of dental alveolar compensation to the mandibular asymmetry and pronathism. This ideal position also caused occlusal interferences in the molars by the backward rotational setback. To remove these interferences before surgery, transverse tooth movements were planned. For this decompensation, two mini implants were placed in the mid palate and connecting plate was placed over the platform of the mini implant head. Nuts were fastened over the connecting plate. Then a palatal lever was placed and tied with ligature wires. And transverse forces were applied for transverse decompensation. Blue teeth show pre-treatment and white teeth show ideal position of teeth. After placing Palatal mini implants and connecting plate, O32 by O32 inch TMA palatal lever was inserted in the bracket slot on the connecting plate with the green line configuration and by squeezing the palatal lever on the right side like the blue line configuration, buccal expansion force was generated on the right first molar. Transpalatal arch was placed to move the left first molar lingually. Also, elastomeric chains were applied from the palatal lever to the left molars for intrusion and lingual movement. Left first premolar was extracted to retract and tip the maxillary incisors lingually. Intrusion of maxillary molars was continued. To prevent compensatory eruption of mandibular molars into the space created by intrusion of maxillary molars, Blue bite resins were bonded on the mandibular posterior teeth. Right before surgery, bite resins were removed, and now posterior open bite can be seen clearly. 3D simulation of single jaw surgery. Yellow shows distal segment of the mandible. Distal segment of the mandible was set back 19.5 mm and rotated clockwise 12.5 degrees. Roll correction was made along with 9mm transfer shift of the distal segment. This included 2.5mm of transverse overcorrection. Your correction was also made. 
Between the proximal and distal segments, gap was formed on the left side and bony interference was formed on the right side, resulting in axial rotation of the proximal segments like these orange proximal segments. From this surgical simulation, CAD CAM splint was fabricated. Pre-treatment, pre-surgery, and post-surgery. Gray color shows pre-surgery. Blue color shows one week after surgery. Blue shows pre-surgery. Yellow shows simulation of surgery. Orange shows simulation of proximal segment rotation. Red shows one week after surgery. Compared to the yellow simulation, there was 1.2 mm of immediate relapse of transverse correction. This was acceptable because this was less than the overcorrection. Four months after surgery, buccal overjet was deficient on the right side. Transparatal arch was expanded and expansion force was applied on the maxillary right second molar from the palatal level. To intrude mandibular left incisors, a mini implant was placed and elastomeric chain was connected. Class 3 elastic was used on the left side for more transverse decompensation of the mandibular midline. After 9 months of post-surgical orthodontic treatment, brackets were debanded. Ivory shows pre-treatment and blue shows post-treatment. Arch symmetry was established orthodontically. Cone beam CT superimposition showed maxillary first molar intrusion of 1.9 mm and second molar intrusion of 3.4 mm. Root resorption was not apparent. By the maxillary molar intrusion and incisor extrusion, the crucial plane was rotated 6 degrees clockwise. This rotation enabled mandibular setback with backward rotation. This also helped anteroposterior decompensation of the incisors. These effects can be called as double jaw surgery like effect. Gray shows pre treatment and blue shows post treatment. Comparison of soft tissues. Facial profile was greatly improved by the rotational setback surgery. Chin point symmetry was completely achieved. However, protuberance of the left gonion and zygoma area remained. Additional bone contouring surgery may improve this. When a patient has a prognathic mandible with low mandibular plane angle, a simple single jaw mandibular setback along the occlusal plane cannot improve the chin and mandibular border prominence. Also, this causes vertical bony step between mesial and distal segments. These problems can be solved by double jaw surgery including both maxillary posterior impaction and mandibular setback with backward rotation. However, maxillary posterior impaction can be replaced with orthodontic intrusion of maxillary posterior teeth as shown in the present case. To conclude, in the treatment of low angle mandibular pronathism with asymmetry, Orthodontic intrusion of the maxillary molars and transverse decompensation can remove the need for maxillary surgery, enabling single jaw mandibular surgery with double jaw surgery like effect. Thank you.